Time to own the Audi you've always wanted, because until February 28th, you can enjoy the Audi A4 with a complimentary style pack, saving you over four and a half thousand euro. So, all you have to do is choose the color. Call into your local Audi dealer during the 191 sales event. Terms and conditions apply while stocks last. Blog Talk Radio. Up the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Hey, this is Nina Taylor on Elation Radio, now being heard 24 hours a day, seven days a week, giving you nothing but the best in great music, ministry, and more. And don't forget to check me out with the gospel news right here with my girl, Kimmy Kim, on Elation Radio. Desperate for you, gotta have you, can't make it on my own, and I know I really need you, I'm really longing for you, really yearning for you, Holy Spirit, take my hand, I'll follow, Lord.
Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice in it. Thank you for coming on to Real Issues with the Sisters with Pastor Bello. Pastor Bello and the Sisters, and we're going to have a great time in the Lord. And I'm going to pass the torch over to my sister, my friend, Pastor Pastor Bello. How you doing, my sister? How are you? Are you there? Okay. Able to Pastor, hear me? She must, yes. Yeah, she, you know, I know you probably have your, you know, muted on and things like that. So. No, <laughs> the mute is not on. The mute is no, not on. I had your, oh, okay. I didn't hear you at first. My bad. But uh, <laughs> how you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Um, we have a, a special, special invited guest. Um, the last four of her number is 7560. She yeah, should be on the on. call. Yes, All yes. right, that's our special guest, which is Pastor Jill, and I'm so excited. Um, I met Amen. Pastor Jill at a actual, um, it's like I guess you would say a, a event, more like a, a revival. It was through Prophet Econ, and um, I loved her spirit. She is powerful, but she is doesn't try to make a scene. She is awesome, and that's the type of person that already knows that they are enveloped in God. They don't have to make a fuss because they know it's already inside of them. And uh, before I pray, um, she is Pastor Pastor Jill Maddox, and she has A4AA, and she will explain her ministry to us a little bit more. It's anointed for another audience ministry. So once um, I let her come on and introduce herself uh, right after we do the opening prayer, and then we can just dive into our program. Father God, we thank you for today. You are an awesome God. You led us through the day. You guided us, you whispered to us, Lord God, and we thank you. We are excited because we know that tomorrow is just like today. It's going to be the best day of our life, and we thank you, Lord. Lord God, we love you. Lord God, we ask you today, if it's anyone that's listening that have blinders on their eyes, to remove them. If they have plugs in their ears, to remove it. Lord God, we want to hear a word from you. Lord God, take all the honor and admiration. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Um, our Bible verse is going to come out of Colossians 1, 3, 1, 13. And I'm going to now ask uh, Pastor Jill Maddox if she can introduce herself so she can let us know all the wonderful things about her ministry. Amen. Good evening. Good evening to everyone, especially to the hosts of this awesome, awesome uh, radio broadcast. I thank you for the invite. Um, My name is Pastor Jill Maddox. I'm the senior pastor of the newly launched ministry, A4AA, and that stands for Anointed for Another Audience. Uh, Prior to me launching this ministry, I uh, was a senior pastor of um, and founder of GGG Regenerated Ministries, which most people know me as um, or know me from. And the Lord uh, gave me the okay to say that I had completed that assignment, and that was for almost 17 years I did that. And. I said, well, Lord, what's going on now? And, um, you know, people will try to keep you in a box if you let them. Amen. And I just refuse to be boxed in. <laughs> and Amen. I refuse to um, allow man, and that doesn't mean gender, but I refuse to let people dictate to me when I know that I can hear the voice of God. And a lot of times we get stuck into an assignment where nobody ever really 
knows that that assignment is complete and there's much more that God has for us to do. So one day I saw the triple A sign, but I kept seeing a number four in there. And I said, well, Lord, what is that? And he said to me, you're anointed for another audience. And I went crazy. And uh, so now I'm walking into that. And as you can see, you guys invited me on the show. And so this is another audience that I'm anointed to and privileged to minister with you guys tonight. And so I'm excited about um, what God has in store, not just for me, but for the collaboration of all of us together. I'm just blessed and honored and honored humbled immensely to be the invited guest tonight. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Our Bible verse is coming out of Colossians chapter 1, verse Mm -hmm. 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? And our topic for today is um, is a is a different um, topic, and what it is is we have to stop disrespecting God. We have a bad habit, and it's a habit that means it can be broken. A uh, bad habit of disrespecting God, and we do it so that it to us it's a norm, but it's not. It's it's total uh, disrespect disrespect of His word. And of his gospel. And uh, when I look at different areas of our lives, as women, we have to uphold a lot of hats. And and some people say a lot of glass balls. And with holding up each glass ball, we have to realize that everything has to be in decency and in order. And we have to also understand that that decency and order is going to come directly from the gospel. It's it's not going to be something that is taught by your tradition. It's not something that's taught as a norm. And it's definitely not something taught by your peers. It is taught directly out the scriptures because we know through the scriptures, you can't leave it to your own understanding. You can't interpret it the way you want to interpret it. So um, we have to stop this disrespect of God because we are all on a mission. And the mission uh, is driven by God. Just like Pastor Jill said, that one mission was complete. God blessed off on it and told her to immediately start another mission. So that lets us know that she understands how important it is to obey and respect our our God. Um, The first question I have is what are the different ways? What are really the different ways that we disrespect God? And on the show, you know, I always use myself because um, I am not, you know, the one that points because the point finger also goes back this way. So some of the ways that we disrespect God is simple, you know, simple little things uh, that we do. Uh, One of the ways that I can think of is you go to church, you have a beautiful, wonderful time in the Lord. You get in your car, and 10 minutes later, somebody cuts you off. Everything that you just heard about, danced on, sang on, went out the window. And you are in your own mode of trying, and and most oftentimes we're in the car by ourselves, trying to talk about how what they did. Why did they do this? Uh, I can't believe it. Oh, they're totally disrespectful. Don't they know what kind of car I drive? Blah, 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 blah. So we're not understanding the scriptures because we don't know what was on that person's mind. We don't know what that person went through. So we should always be in a prayerful mode. We should immediately start praying, Father God, I thank you for sparing my life, but Lord God, please touch the driver. If it's anything that's not of you, and then remove it. So that's one of the ways that that we disrespect God. And I'm going to turn it um, over to Pastor Jill, so maybe she can tell us um, one or two um, ways that we often, (laughs) as a, and I say we, because I'm saying it as a collective, that we disrespect God. 
Well, one of the things I wanted to um, just first bring out was um, what you had stated. Everything must be done, all things, not some things, one thing, but all the way across the board, all things should be done in decency and in order. And we are living in a society in a dispensation of time where order is actually a curse word. Uh, it, it's totally um, not represented in the body of Christ. And th- that being said, the disrespect honestly not creeps in. It walks in boldly because we have embraced a word called familiarity. And I, when I was growing up, this word was often used, but in this dispensation of time, um, it's not used at all. And so in the text, in, in Mark, the sixth chapter, that's where we find the saying, familiarity breeds contempt, which means um, if you know someone very well or you experience something a lot, you stop respecting them. Um, It can also uh, give us the essence of the better we know people, the more likely we are to find fault with them. That's the new dictionary of culture literacy. The other is the more you know something or someone, the more you start to find fault and dislike things about it and or them. And here we find in the text in Mark 6, Um, Jesus was in the town of Nazareth, and that's when the familiarity began. Also, um, the book of, I think is Mark 4 and 4, if I want to be exact, um, where they said Jesus was not honored in his own home. A prophet is not honored in his own home. Um. Because the people begin to become so familiar with us. Uh, They become so familiar with God. I believe that people have taken God as a friend of mine out, totally out of content. Um, So to me, the disrespect comes in the familiarity first. One of the things that my spiritual mother used to always say to us was we would make a statement and she would say, you don't know God like that. Lord, I used to get so (laughs) mad when I hear her say that. Lord, that would take me to a place. But she's right. And so here I begin to hear Holy Spirit say to me um, over the years, and I say it oft times, There's so much more to know about God. Never get to the place where you're so familiar with him. And you can even hear it when people pray now. They pray to him like it's their cousin Jim Bob. Or they, they pray to him with no reverence. And reverence defined as the ultimate level of fear, of reverential fear, which is the ultimate respect. So, so when you sent the topic today, I was like, ooh, this is a doozy. Oh, <laughs> 10 million people need to hear this one because mm-hmm. we disrespect him, as you said earlier, in the most simplest ways we can disrespect God. But because we're so familiar with him, Amen. we don't even realize Amen. that we are disrespecting him. We the, don't. the disrespect oftentimes come from us disrespecting one another. The Bible says, how can you say that you love me, who you may have yet not seen and not love your dis- your brother and your sister? To me, that is disrespecting him, for God is love. Amen. So this topic is so broad, woman of God. This topic is so broad, men and women of God. But but it like again, like you said, it starts with the little things. It starts with the little things. So um, if we can get a check in our spirit about not being so familiar with, with the things of God, the things of right. God, God, His Word, His will, His way, our relationship. I'm I'm jumping all over the place. We're going to talk about. Oh, that's okay. Later. Yeah. So I was going to I was going to come back anyway because um. I don't know if, uh, Sister Kimmy, if you had something to add to it. Yes, ma'am. 
soon to be Dr. Kimmy. <laughs> Sister Kimmy? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I know, because I'm telling you, when she said familiarity, that is hitting the nail on the head. And it is so predominant in churches. Amen. 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 Also, I love the, that um, those responses because that is so true. Sometimes we can become so familiar. And then I'm also remembering, like, there's sometimes, unfortunately, people who tend to put things before God. And that's another way how we can disrespect God when we don't trust him enough where we um, tend to use our efforts, such as we put things before us, and then we allow those things to um, become our God, like idols. And another way we can disrespect God is not having the faith in believing that uh, we can do all things through Christ because it says in the Word, without faith it's impossible to please Him. And faith is the substance of things of the unseen. So there are times when people, you know, they say they trust God, but when the mountains are coming and when the storms are near, it tends to be forgotten and, like she says, becomes familiar because we're um, we're used to having things um, going right and when things fall down or when you are in a um, a Peter moment on the water or when you feel as if nobody cares, um, you start to uh, belittle your faith. And you definitely have to have love because without love, it's impossible. So sometimes we use that love in a wrong way. If you do things for me, then I love you. But that's not the type of um, love that God is asking us to love him and others. So there's many ways that we tend to disrespect God, but one thing I love about God, he knows the heart. So as long as we, our heart is right and we're still working for the Lord, we cannot lose this race because he knows our, our flesh. He knows our hearts. And if we, were, if we could do perfection, then we would not need um, Jesus. So I am thankful that he knows my shortcoming. I'm thankful that he knows my heart as well. So as we continue on this wonderful discussion, I really believe that we must continue putting him first and uh, trusting that faith. Yeah. I want to say that just to tag on to um, Dr. Kim, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the key word in there is all. And that's where the disrespect comes in, partiality, Um, the measures that we tend to give out to him because we tend to treat God like we do human beings. And this is because our understanding of what love is is so minuscule and so out of order because God is love, period. Mm -hmm. God loves me. No, no, no. God (laughs) is love. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are created in his image and in his likeness. He breathed life into man and we became a living soul. So the Ruah, the breath of God, is the love of God on the inside of us. Receiving the measure of that Ruah, of that breath, is where the disrespect comes in at because we have not become one with being like him. Amen. Being of him. God will never charge us to do something that he has not enabled us to do. Mm-hmm. He will, I'll say it again. God will never charge us to do anything that he has not enabled us to do because the Bible says we can do all things Thanks. through Christ who strengthen us. All, not some. And so when God says, love your neighbors, Love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Let me sidebar. I teach everywhere I go. Stay away from them cute scriptures. <laughs> the cute ones, stay she away from cute those. cute scriptures. Yeah, I don't like, I like that. Scriptures. Well, that's what I like it is. Let's cherry pick. Let's cherry pick out the Bible. What pertains yeah. to them and what makes them feel good like and, and really what comforts them when they know they're doing wrong. And like what you said, you have to stay flesh. away from it. Yeah, what pleases their flesh. 
But you got to right. kill this flesh daily. Amen. We die daily. That means we kill this flesh daily. How? By loving the Lord. I love God enough to pray for those that despitefully use me. Come on I now. love God enough. See, I don't love myself that much. I love him enough because we self have to die in order to love him and to love God's people the way he wants us to love them. So it all is centered around this one word, love. That's what Dr. Kim was talking about, love, period. But if you don't know what that you is. You started it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we're, 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 we're doing this together. It's a collaboration. Amen. Amen. So, so watch this. Get that also, also, you have, they have to understand to get that, you have to have that communication. You can't be downloaded something and you haven't been uploaded to God. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. So they, they have to understand that. People think that, you know, it's something like, you know, when kids go out and fly a kite and every now and then you catch the wind and the kite go up. God is not that. You just don't catch him. You have to be directly connected to him. And that requires mm-hmm. us to do it daily. That's not sometimes whenever we, like she, like uh, Pastor Joe said, when the flesh needs something. No, we need mm-hmm. him every single hour, mm-hmm. every minute. Yeah. So we have, in order to kill the flesh, like she was talking about, we have to be directly communicated with him. Word. Yeah, and it's also and I told, a I, I told uh, Pastor Kim, uh, Pastor Jill, um, mm-hmm. but when I sent her the information, I told her, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give you the agenda, but I'm going to tell you, the show sometimes God has his own way. He takes it a whole oh, new okay. direction. Yeah. And this is a good proof of it because um, God, we, God gives us a topic. We sit down and we, we hear from him, but we don't know what God has actually downloaded to each and every one of us. And everything works together. As we see, everything, you, you, uh, Sister Kimmy got the topics, um, Pastor Jill got the topics, I wrote them, but everything is blended together, and that's the part of love. We, we never even had a conversation about any of this. This is our first time, everybody coming on here, but you see that we, I, I know I am, I'm excited because I love change. And with us understanding how disrespectful we are, to God, that means that we need to improve. Not improve tomorrow, but right now. Don't leave this show without understanding. And um, as we go on and at the end, I have everybody to introduce themselves. You may not feel comfortable talking to me. You might say, I want to call Pastor Jill. I want to listen to Pastor Jill. Do what you need to do to get closer to God. You might say, I'm going to reach out to Sister Kimmy because I've known her longer. Reach out to them, but we can't keep going on in the same fleshly mode, doing the exact same thing, and nothing is changing, and we're just checking the block. That's all we're doing. We're, so, we're disrespecting them as we go to church. We disrespect them as we leave. We're just checking the box. So when somebody asks you, did you go to church, you can say, oh, I went. And I love to ask them, Pastor Jill, what church you go to, because me, if you can't answer it just like that, that means that you don't go there that often. That's a good point. One of, the, one of the other things about that is the disrespect that we have one to another. Mm. When we disrespect each other, we disrespect God. God. Mm. Mm. Why? Because the God measure of authority is imputed from Him transferred into man to represent him in the earth realm. And so the escape to not do that is I can go to God for myself. Oh, okay. Uh Oh, okay. So you, you can just walk around and disrespect delegated authority and still have respect for God? I don't see how. Because he does tells us to love our neighbors as if we love ourselves. So I really believe what you just said. Okay, so let's start, let's stop I'm, right I'm, there. I'm, when you say that, when you say that, Sister Kimmy, let's stop right mm-hmm. there. So when you say it does tell us that um, we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we're assuming that people love themselves. 
I love myself, but I'm saying there's some people that just don't love themselves. And, and as know. women, we do sometimes go into that I'm not loved, I don't love myself, I don't love this. So you know why? You don't cross it on God. When you don't know God and not love God, you can't love anyone else. So that's right. a disconnect. Exactly. So what what is um what would you tell the young woman that's listening now, uh, Pastor Jill? She she's listening. She's saying that I I, I want to love God, but I don't even feel secure about myself. So how can I love my neighbor and I, I can't even feel secure in my relationship with God to be able to do that? First of all, we have to teach um, to give hope to these young women and young men about themselves who, who, who did not tell them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, did not tell them that they are amazing did not tell them that nothing that you do take God by surprise. You're awesome anyway. Amen. Huh? Th- these, are, these are the reasons why they don't love themselves is because they didn't grow up understanding or having people around them to teach what real love is. Amen. Love right. holds no records of wrong. Then who, who didn't tell that young woman that? Who didn't tell that young man that? Love, true love, holds no Records of wrong. None. That's that's what real love is. So when we begin to teach them, then we begin to reach them by showing them. Let me give a sidebar. I happen to, to work with some young ladies um, in a, a secular job, and uh, I'm a house parent, and I have seven girls in the house. And I remember them screaming and cursing me out. Guess what they said? Stop loving us, Miss Jill. We don't know what to do with all of this effing love, Miss Jill. Crying, tears streaming down their face. I'm serious. Young Mm -hmm. ladies from the inner city of Philadelphia, and this is what they were screaming to me. You know why? Because when they do something wrong, they're used to being penalized. When they do something wrong, they're used to getting cussed out. When they do something wrong, they're used to being belittled and and probably talked about. Or I still go and cook dinner. I still let them in my office. I still let them eat my ginger mints. I still buy them stuff. I still, no, because love is what love does, not what it says. And so here God has us three here to show people, not to just dictate to them, but to show them what love is. Amen. Okay? Amen. And Amen. that's what and we're you know, doing that's today. Daily. That's daily. That's daily. I'm, yes. uh, I know senior pastor said one thing that uh, I, he said this, I know, about four or five years ago. He said, every day, look in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. I love you. Because when you looking at yourself, it's a big difference because you see what everybody else sees. It's not something that you figure up in your mind. You're actually looking at what everybody else sees. And then he said, once you do that, declare and decree into your own life of prosperity, the clan decree in your life that you will grow stronger in God. And and I'm telling you, when when you do it, it's like reality sits in because you you you're empowered. You you feel like God is right there with you. You're speaking it and it's going into the atmosphere and God is right there. So when you said you you had the young ladies, you know, what you did was deep, deep therapy. And they probably did say stop, stop, because like you said, they were, they were not used to it. And that's more or less, I guess, where they were conditioned another way. They were conditioned to maybe not even get dinner if they did something, or conditioned that they had to stay in their room and, and, and they couldn't socialize with anybody. But what you did is that you broke down all those chains, all those barriers that they had on there and showed them what God said was far above most which is love. And and that takes us understanding, like we went like we're going back, that we have to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So you you not only gave them deep therapy, 
you gave them an excellent version of a Christian role model because sometimes people only know Christ through us. So the examples that we use is what they see. So what they see when anybody ever comes back or, or, or they go somewhere else, they can say truly that I know Pastor Jill loves God because I've seen her actions. I see, I've see. heard the words that she said. So therefore, I know that God is love. You know, so that, that right there was a, it was, you said a sidebar, but it was a perfect example of, you know, how somebody can actually start is being an example, giving them that deep, deep therapy that is actually needed. Amen. 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 And, and we're, we're to do that with, with one another at all times. So to me, it's just effortless. It's like what, what are you said, this is daily. This is this is what we do. This is who we are. Love is who we are. It's not a practice. Go keep practicing it. You don't practice love. <laughs> what is a practice? I don't, this is not basketball. What do you, how do you practice love? No, you just do it. It's a verb. Mm. It's a verb. Well, you it's know not what? A I noun. think a lot of people. I think a lot of people is going to practice it on February fourteenth. That's what all the well, practice comes in. <laughs> that's another. That's another show. I don't even that's want to go show. into that. <laughs> that's another show in the future. I even took notes of it all because I said I'm. I, I, you hadn't even been on the show this time, and I was like, okay, let me keep track of these weeks because I know whatever she's gonna put out today, she's gonna have to come back again, and we're gonna have to finish up for the grand finale. <laughs> and love is one of my favorite topics because. Um, I told my parents before transitioning out, I I must have been created in love because love is not hard. I get mad with myself because I love so much. I I have to remind myself that I'm not speaking to you. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I don't know how not to love. What I did learn, though, over the years I remember my mom said this to me one time, and she said, the measure of love that you have to give, no man can handle. What? Who says that to a young girl? And so as I begin to grow, I was mad when she said it, but as I begin to grow, what she was saying to me was, only God can handle the measure of love that you're trying to give a human being, it's too much. Love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart. We're going right back to the scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what we try to do is we try to give this love to humans. They don't know what to do with it. But when we love God and in our expression to him, we express it, matriculate it down to everyone that comes across our path. So then they get different measures of all of this love that we love our God with. Because the Bible Amen. says all that we do in Colossians, it says, do it as unto the Lord. Okay? So all of this love that we can love, I can love stranger people. Go, you don't even know those people, Jill, and you just, well, it's easy. It is easy because if you're doing it as unto the Lord, then it's easy. How often Mm -hmm. do we say, well, I just love the Lord. I just love the Lord. Well, he's like, well, again, how can you say you love me whom you have not seen and not Mm -hmm. love your brothers and your sisters? I call Mm -hmm. you a liar. Amen. And so this is what the Bible says. And so that's why I say stay away from them cute scriptures. Right. Well, see, that's because the the other one um, that they that they don't cherry pick will make them face their own faults, and people don't like that. They they don't like to to be faulty. Uh, and uh, since this is a women a woman show, we we are the hardest ones. I remember when Pastor told me that. Um, he wanted me to be part of the women's ministry. 
And I said to myself, Pastor Jill, I said, ooh, Lord, you really, really testing me. This is just dunking me in the fire. Because I, I worked, you know, as a drill sergeant when I was in the military. I had all women uh, platoon. Uh, then when I was in uh, the regular part of the Army, you know, we, it was majority of women. And I, and I worked admin, so I heard all kinds of things. And I'm saying to myself, you know, I, I really have to fast. I have to pray about this because I wanted to make sure that whatever the Lord wanted me to do, that I did it in the decency and order that he had for me. And I wanted to make sure, because see, a lot of people don't understand, as, as leaders, we have a responsibility to make sure when we give them instructions, we can back it up scripturally, and then we're able to understand what the follow-up is. Because a lot of different leaders, they give you scriptures, fast three days, uh, and, and the Lord will answer your prayer. Okay, well, what's the follow-up to it? Because a lot of people can do that, but you they pray for financial growth. Okay, well, what is the follow-up? Did you even cancel them before to find out if it may be because they just don't know how to balance a the checkbook? They just don't understand just because you have all those checks, you don't have all that money. So what is the follow-up? So when, And I was thinking all that in my head when he said uh, uh, to be part of, to lead the women's ministry. I'm like, oh, goodness. But one thing I did not do, uh, uh, similar to uh, Pastor Jill, I heard from God and I just followed because, you know, we're, we're in this world, we're not of this world, and we're here because we have a mission, a reason. God has a uh, destiny for us, and I wanted to make sure that I'm in God's will because I didn't want to be in man's will. I need to be directly focused in God's will. So uh, going back to the subject of love, that's where the un- this, this topic comes in with, you know, being disrespectful. Understanding about love will have you to overcome. The true love for God will have you to overcome un- uh, being disrespectful and understanding how you're being disrespectful. Not not somebody actually telling you and you're not listening, but actually them telling you and you understand how you were actually uh, disrespectful. Uh, We will be probably closing out in like 15 minutes, uh, but I do want Sister Kimmy to say a couple of words and um, to then I'm going to swing back to uh, Pastor Jill, which I I can speak for Sister Kimmy because we we have been so close that we are already honored to call each other sisters that we are – inviting, and y'all hear me on the open airline, um, Pastor Jill back. And I do want people to friend her. She has an awesome show. I watched it yesterday. And I'm telling you, she let us know exactly what pushers were. And you probably think to yourself, pushers? Okay, I'm not going to give it away. Friend her. Watch, watch her actually uh, Facebook uh, program, and you will understand exactly what I'm saying. So, Sister Kimmy, um, we're going to Title it with you. Do you have anything, three words you want to say before you tell us more and exciting things about yourself that what God is doing through you? Sister Kimmy? Basic, I'm so sorry. Basically, you guys uh, both hit it on the nail. You cannot do anything without love. In First Corinthians chapter 13, towards the end of it, it says, these are the greatest things, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love. So you can have all the faith, you can have all the hope, you can speak in tongues, you can tarry on the bench, you can be the best pastor, the best bishop, the best minister, the best evangelist. But if you don't have love, it's all vanity and God cannot hear from you. So that's why it's imperative that you love because that's really the major disrespectful because um, my sister just said, God is love. First John mm-hmm. chapter 4 the entire four talks about that. You must love. Without love, you can't not know God because God is love. And um, Amen. I just love, I love love because I'm a love follower. So you guys hit the nail for me. 
<laughs> so, Pastor Amen. Jill, tell us, tell us about, um, give us some final words, and then tell us uh, if you have any events coming up, how God is going to, you know, move you throughout. I do know that you mentioned um, in your program that I watched yesterday that you're going to be all over preaching throughout. God is going to, you know, move through you. And then that way everyone will know how to reach out to you by by you giving us, you know, how, the Facebook, Twitter, you know, whatever. So just Amen. give us some last words and then let us know how we can get in touch with you. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, to Minister Kimmy and yourself, it's wonderful co-laboring with you guys tonight. And thank you for allowing me to be your special guest. Um, I do want to just make mention of three more points and the first one being love the Lord the, your God your God with all your heart Amen. mind soul and strength remembering that Jesus says that those who love him will obey him so in obedience we respect God through disobedience we bring a measure of disrespect the other way we disrespect God is not loving others with God's love. Here's the next one. Yield yourself fully to him as Lord and master in every area of your life, holding nothing back, submit it unto him. And when we don't do that, we disrespect him. When we Amen. don't fully give ourselves over to him and allow him to be Lord and master, that means we got to sell out. And I think um, Minister Kimmy said it earlier, getting rid of this flesh, putting this flesh under subjection, um, respects God, shows a measure of respect and reverence for him. And when we don't, I can't get it together, that's disrespect because, again, <laughs> he has never charged us to do something that he right. has not enabled us to do. And so we want to do that. We want to show God um, how much we love him by respecting him even the more. Um, the other way that we disrespect God is being disrespectful to those that he has given charge over us, our husbands, our boss. It says, render unto Caesar, what's due unto Caesar, just being disrespectful to his word. I mean, this topic can go on and on forever and ever, but we, we just want to just narrow it down to the love thing. Amen. Just love God. Amen. Love him with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and we can do that by loving one another without motives. That's another Amen. show. Amen. <laughs> Having all of those motives, you know, and, and again, you ladies touched on that earlier. And so we thank God for awakening and making us aware. The spirit of awareness tonight charges us and takes rule over us and causes an arrest. Arrest us, Holy Spirit, Amen. when we are disrespecting you or being disrespectful towards you, your word, your will, and your way. Let an alarm go off by way of your Holy Spirit to align us again and again and again until that great day that you charge us to come home or the day that you crack the sky and we meet you midair. We don't want to be disrespectful to you, but we do want to respect you even the more daily. Um, the way that, that you can contact me is through Facebook. Uh, it's just plain Pastor Jill. I, my page is public. You can always inbox me. My contact number is 908-509-1695 for all appointments, engagements, evangelism, field, things of that nature. I've done um Locally and internationally, the Lord has allowed me to minister over the years. Um, and I know that 2019 is going to be a great year for greater evangelism and greater ministry um, to stay connected to the various conferences and revivals that I will be given. You can always 
contact me through social media. My last name is Maddox, M-A-T-T-O-C-K-S. I think I'm on Instagram. I'm not that much on Twitter a lot, but I'll do Instagram and I'll do Facebook Lives and things like that. And I'm real and raw straight out. So if you can't take it, don't connect with me. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. Warning order, warning order. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the fix it uh, woman of God. I come straight out and I am the prophet of the Lord. I thank God for my first dominant gift is that of the prophetic. Um, and uh, that's where I walk heavy at. And um We're just looking forward to all of the great things that he's going to do. It's so wonderful for this opportunity tonight. You pray for me, I pray for you, and we watch God change things. Amen. 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 Um, We really love and appreciate that Pastor Jill took time out today to join us. Uh, What I would like to say, everyone knows, and the new ones that don't know, uh, Pastor Rhonda. All one word, Bello, B as in boy, E-L-L-O. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Um, and we have a new website for the Blessed Network, which will be coming out, which actually has a schedule that should start next week. And it's www.theblessednetworklive.com. And that uh, schedule will be full effect. One of the new events is BAM, Blessed Anointing Marketplace. And uh, that is for any and everyone that God has spoke to, that God has driven them to do something for the kingdom. It might be that you want to introduce your CD. You might want to introduce your clothing line. You might, and, and when I say clothing line, I don't mean any type of clothing. I mean, like where you do pastoral robes, where you do any type of formal church attire. Um, it, it could be anything that God has laid on you that will help build the ministry, and that's the Blessed Anointed uh, Marketplace, which is BAM. Also, I like to put out there, Coffee with Rhonda is Saturday at 9 a.m., 9 a.m., um, and a lot of people go by statistics, and I'm going to just be plain straight. You go by statistics. Statistics say that we cannot adapt to more than 20 minutes in our brain of knowledge. Okay, that's statistics. God wrote the Bible. You're not going to read the Bible in 20 minutes. So we don't listen to statistics. I'm saying that because... Uh, a lot of programs, not just Al's or Pastor Joe's or Sister Kimmy's, people are always watching the time. No, we're doing it in decency and order. We're doing it according to what God told us to do, and that message might be for you. So uh, the show, the Coffee with Rhonda, comes on at 9 a.m. We also have February the 1st, a 12-hour prayer session. 12-hour prayer session. It's from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. It's 12 hours. Now, I know some people got to go to work, and I know some people be just getting off of work. But we ask you just to swing by for as little or as much as you can on that day. Um, Also, we have the women's ministry. We do it every Wednesday, 7 p.m. at the church, Prayer and Revival, tomorrow, every Thursday, 7 p.m. Isa Esther, Pastor Jill, Isa Esther is coming out. We have up fashion designer. Um, She is actually uh, on Facebook. Her information will be out there next week. Save the date will be this week coming out. And Isa Esther, we know that this is going on really our fourth year. This is our third event, but it's going on the fourth year. And uh, it's March 16th. And that vision came because I wanted everyone to know if Esther Stepped out of the Bible, what would she tell us women today? How would she tell us that we need to act, walk, dress, you know, to make sure that we are going according to God's will? We also have uh, February the 9th. Uh, Pastor and I will be in Florence, South Carolina, 
Minister Chuck Singleton will be ordained to Pastor Chuck Singleton. Uh, Dr. Singleton will be there. Uh, I think someone's coming from Alaska. Um, we plan to rejoice in the Lord because I'm telling you, when someone gets that type of elevation, it's a rejoicing. But we have to pray even harder because Satan is out there. Don't deceive yourself. He go for the head and he tries to chop us all off. Um, and that goes back to Pastor Jill. She, I'm telling you, watch that one little episode. You get hooked, and that's a good hook. That's one of those hooks where you get that natural spiritual high to know I can do this because my God lives. Um, the last but not least, next week we will be starting our food bank mission. We want because we're an outreach church. We want to reach out to people that are in need, and we know this is the season. And you know, people are that well. They are laid off, in other words. They they have a job, but they're not getting paid. They're furloughed. Um, and then we have the Nigerian Clinic that will be coming up in May. Um, the Nigerian Clinic will be located in, and I pray, Lord, help me to pronounce this, Okiadi, which I do know is in Ondo State, in, Lake, in, uh, in Nigeria. That will be in May. If all hearts are accord. I want to ask uh, Pastor Jill if she can close us out with prayer, and we are going to meet and greet each other tomorrow if people come to Holy Mountain International or next Wednesday when we come back to uh, have our guest will be Dr. Virginia Singleton. She will be our guest next week. And trust and believe everyone that's listening, everyone that's viewing, I will be on the phone, and I, this is uh, Pastor Jill's warning order, trying to get on her calendar so we can get her back on our program because we got a lot of continuation. We just, I'm telling you, we, you know, if you envision an apple, we just pulled off the stem. That's all we did. We just pulled it off. So we got a lot more to go. So, Pastor Jill, if you can please uh, grace us with giving us our, our closeout prayer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much again, you and um, our great host, co-host, uh, Elder Kim. I know I gave her five titles already. Hey, <laughs> man, and we received God it. <laughs> God bless you, women of God. Father, we thank you so much because it is you that have made us and not we ourselves. We are your people and the sheep of your pasture. We thank you because you do all things well. Father, if there's anything that has not pleased you tonight, we ask that you forgive us. Yes, Lord. Forgive us for all of our sins, our shortcomings, anything that you consider unrighteous. Forgive us even the more in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. For it is so our desire to please you even the more. And in so doing, we will be respecting you and respecting one another so that we would please you. Open up our mind, enhance our eyesight so that we can see from your view, not just our view, as we begin to put this flesh under subjection. We thank you because of this new measure of awareness. Hallelujah, where your spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. There is an excitement in the air, and God, we become one with this excitement of pleasing you. And we thank you right now in advance because your track record is so good with us. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for what your plan has already dropped down from heaven and hit the earth realm with our names on it. We thank you that our names are being unraveled through the wind, the ruah, the breath of you, our wonderful and great creator. We bless you because we can do any and everything because we have you down on the inside of us and there is no failure in you. To that young woman, to that middle-aged woman, to that older woman, lift up your head, O ye gates, 
and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The King of glory has just come in today. God, encamp your angels around about them. Send angels that would minister and keep them lifted up. Send people across their path that would continue to minister this word of truth and this word of love as they have listened today and become sponges to absorb the fullness and the wealth of what has been distributed out to each and every one of us. We bless you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. We seal this prayer and this people with the blood of the Lamb, serving notice to the enemy that he cannot kill, steal, and or destroy that which you have done today. And we thank you for it even the more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Until we meet Amen. again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It was your love that lifted me. Your love that lifted me, your love that lifted me, your love that lifted me, when I couldn't take it, when I could make it, oh, when I could take it, yes. When I can make it, oh, 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 what love, yeah, what peace, yeah, what joy, yeah. he gives, oh, yeah. I was thinking. Deep it sin for from the peaceful Despairing uh, cry from the water, he lifted me.
Set me free. 